Good day, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Saturday, October 9th, 2010, and I'm Darko. Welcome to this news bulletin. I'm going to cover uh, a few things uh, besides the war on terror, liberty, and sovereignty, and the economy. I'm going to just kind of, uh, I have a collection of articles, and um, they could be just about anything, but they will include eugenics, Big Brother, a little bit of mind control. Um, start off with the eugenics, though. This is from the New York Times. Oh, yeah, I have to plug my own website. I keep forgetting this. Uh, my website is ggnonline.com. That's www.ggnonline.com. Uh, please go by there and check it out. You can see and learn who I am uh, and uh, check out some of their most recent uploads. So here we go. This is report 1 million Haitians in 1,300 squalid camps. So they're still down there in these camps, uh, in pretty bad, uh, in a bad position. Yeah, but in a bad situation. It says a refugee advocacy group said Thursday that more than 70 percent of camps in Haiti, home to an estimated 1.3 million earthquake victims, lack proper international management. Nearly nine months after the disaster. Oh wow! Look at this. So they just come out right off the bat and say they lack proper international management. They're this whole thing, I think, I, I produce a video uh, about Haiti uh, the day of the earthquake, uh, saying that it was caused by HARP, or that it was a good possibility that it was caused by HARP. Um, I can't prove that 100%, but uh, it could be used. Uh, that type of technology exists, and just like uh, cloud seeding and weather modification, it could be used as a political weapon. Um, and it's even stated in Owning the Weather, uh, weather, fall, uh, weather Force Multiplier, an Air Force document. Uh, it basically uh, lays out what they're doing, what their plans are. This, oh, I'm talking about the government and the corporations. Uh, but yeah, the technology exists and, and it will be used and it has been used. That's just my personal belief. Um, possibly in Pakistan as well uh, and Russia. But it says it lacks proper international management nearly nine months after the the disaster, leaving them at an increased risk of sexual and gang violence, hunger, and forced eviction, said Washington-based Refugees International. Said researchers visited uh, visiting Haiti found that a f that few of the roughly 1,300 camps they studied had international organization for migration appointed officials to turn for help and protection, and are able unable to communicate or coordinate with the international humanitarian community. Um, and anyone that is a new listener, uh, you just have to remember that the United Nations' uh, number one policy is population control, and they take it a step further and uh, go towards population reduction, which uh, basically is getting into the eugenics uh, uh, part. So uh, when you read stuff like this, you just have to remember that uh, there's a problem, reaction, solution. Uh, formula that the powers that be utilize and uh, creating earthquakes and then having people and then not helping the people right because I, I cover this extensively dude um, the whole Haiti earthquake and the aftermath and I was basically explaining how these people would not be helped and they would not be helped for a reason so that they could not only carry out eugenics population reduction reduction but it would also um, bring about a solution which is more international, humanitarian, uh, non-governmental organizations. And, uh, and that's exactly what we have. You know, the problem, they caused it, the earthquake, the reaction. They used the media and uh, uh, the, some people call them rags, such as this, that uh, perpetuate and repeat uh, whatever it is, whatever the goal is for these international uh, entities. And then the solution, which they have, already pre-packaged before the earthquake even struck. So I recommend you come down and check it out. Of course, a month after the, uh, the disaster, uh, helping them with food and all that and security, no. Uh, but they did come in and have vaccinations uh, uh, everywhere. So that was their priority, vaccinations and telecommunications uh, uh, infrastructure. This next one is, is just actually, uh, I just saved this. It's pick your nose, and it's basically a flu mist, a product that I saw on YouTube. Just wanted to post this up, uh, show this that this is everywhere. Uh, the take your, you know, get your flu shot in Walgreens and everywhere else. 
So the propaganda continues, uh, but uh, fortunately, uh, many people are not taking the flu, seasonal flu uh, slash H1N1 flu vaccine that they've combined. They've combined the H1N1 uh, pandemic vaccine into the normal flu vaccine. So if you don't know that and you're about to take the vaccine, you might want to look into it a little bit more. But uh, this is kind of sad. Number one, most subscribed this week. So there you go. Uh, this next one up is genetically modified corn helps in nearby fields study. It says corn that is genetically modified to resist pests benefits neighboring crops as well, U.S. researchers said Thursday. And this is similar to this Healthy Day uh, article that I read yesterday that was covering, or a day before, covering eugenics. And it was basically uh, claiming or proposing or, or hailing uh, flu, flu vaccines or just vaccines in general for uh, uh, pregnant women as a good positive thing uh, because it, well, protects the child in the womb that isn't born yet. So uh, more, it's just more forced vaccination, but it's just kind of a sick mentality that we have now um, where we just say, oh, well, melamine's good for you. You know, fluoride's good for you. Uh, pouring, pouring toxic waste into your water supply is a good thing. And mercury's good. It's a good thing. It's almost like a vitamin. So, yeah, um, it says the Midwestern states that planted corn genetically modified to make a toxin that fights off European uh, corn borer moths has dramatically cut the $1 billion in annual losses from the pests, even preserving crops that have not been altered. And uh, this is, uh, this kind of uh, ties into the what? Well, the bee phenomenon, which they're blaming on a fungi, uh, or fungi and viruses. And they're not even looking at the stuff uh, as far as this genetically modified uh, crops go that repel past. Um, well, is it messing with the pro the natural process and cycles of the bee pollination? Um, not sure. I'm not a you know. I'm not a. Uh, I don't have a PhD and I don't specialize as so. I'm not going to speculate on that at all. Um, if anyone has any uh, good theories or good uh, uh, facts or evidence to kind of back that up, then just post it on the comment board, please. Um, because I don't buy the crap about the viruses and, and, and the fungus. There's just too much genetic manipulation, weather modification that's going on uh, right now that just, when, when you see stuff like that, just remember the, the number one thing that you're going to hear in the media is what? Oh, it has to do with, the clim with climate change and that humans are evil and they're causing these bees to do this. So you need a carbon tax. Just remember that's a, that's 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 the mantra that that you're going to hear over and over and over again until eventually uh, the little crybabies get what they want and they uh, push us down into third world status here in the U.S. Another violent environmentalist ad. This is from the New American. Says as if the gruesome mini film put out by the 1010 Project was not disturbing enough. The group Act Responsible produced an equally horrifying advertisement featuring a young girl in a noose. The ad reads, climate change, human impact, creative challenge. And you see what I mean, guys? I mean, they're dead serious. And that's why I say environmentalism uh, today is equivalent to eugenics of, you know, oh, uh, you know, way back where in the 30s they were openly talking about it. The, you know, uh, professors, uh, uh, you know, just uh, de debaters and intellect intellectuals uh, at universities and, and rich, wealthy industrialists, they were all promoting eugenics. So, you know, just because I'm talking about it now or anybody else is talking about it doesn't mean it's a conspiracy theory. It's a, it's a way of life for these people, and in fact, it's a religion. And if you can, uh, if you can learn that, if you can realize that and, and kind of incorporate that into your perception, you'll have a, a lot better grasp and handle on, uh, on reality, right? On how the things, how things really work. Because eugenics is behind everything. And stuff like this, when I see that, that that's pretty sad. But that's, there's a purpose for that. It's to uh, attack people's emotions, to make them feel guilty. Uh, because, you know, it's a child and it's the earth and you're supposed to care about children and the earth and you're being selfish. But uh, it's all based off a of fraudulent, phony theory. Um, I call it, you know, you can call it soft science or whatever, but that's what it is. So, 
Next one up is some Chinese cigarettes, high in heavy metal content. This is from October 9th, 2010, uh, in the People's Daily Online. 13 Chinese cigarette brands were found to have elevated levels of heavy metals, with some containing about three times the level of lead, cadmium, and arsenic of Canadian cigarette brands, according to a comparative study of cigarettes produced in China and other countries released at an Asian conference on tobacco control policies held on October 7th. Do you think that's a mistake, folks? I guarantee it is not. Pfizer set up research center in Wuhan. I just stumbled, up, uh, stumbled upon this article, and it's a new one. And, uh, yeah, it's basically a eugenics operation setting up in China. Uh, Pfizer chairman and CEO Jeff Kiner announced that a global research and development center for radiation biology I wonder if they're going to be doing out there. Uh, and drug development has been officially established in Wuhan, capital of central China's Hubei province, where he arrived on the same day uh, by a special plane. So there you go, guys, R&D, research and development. Uh, they do it in Africa as well, but that's the more hardcore uh, initial research and development where they basically pay people, uh, unfortunately, who are considered uh, less, worth less than dirt in that continent. Uh, to, you know, basically take your, take some money, take the vaccine. You may die, 50% chance, but hey. And uh, that's how the initial research gets carried out. And then it goes, it, it kind of uh, trickles over to more developed nations. And uh, so here we go. China celebrates 30th anniversary of fetal genocide. Uh, says uh, totalitarian nations have always viewed procreation as an activity that is state business, not the hopes and dreams of ordinary people. Nazi Germany encouraged the right sort of people in the eyes of the state to have as many children as they could and then made sure that the wrong sort of people could not procreate at all. And that's the basically a definition or indirect definition of, or example of eugenics. The fascists, less obsessed with race than the Nazis, also encouraged Italian families to have as many children as possible. And talks about Margaret Sanger and population, quote, overcrowding has long been lurk a lurking menace presented by progressives to compel individuals to yield more power to the state. Population density, however, has almost nothing to do with successful societies. Singapore, among the most crowded nations on the planet, has beautiful parks, neat neighborhoods, low crime rates. Russia, with a vast amount of breathing room, suffers from many of the afflictions which overpopulation is supposed to cause. Says China has adopted a radical population control plan intended to reduce its population to manageable ranges, and that's when they say manageable ranges. It's not this art, not this uh, the writer of this article, but uh, when you hear governments and non-governmental organizations talk about manageable ranges, that basically means that you get to a, uh, you hit a critical mass. Uh, as far as a population of the masses go, where you become a threat to the establishment when there's just too many of you, so they have to start calling you off. You're a threat to their to their uh, to their power. Um, so and goes down here says the one child policy has been state policy of Chinese communism for 30 years. They forcibly sterilized millions of Chinese women and millions of unborn children have been aborted. Yeah, I've read articles about that where you know women are there's been women that has been drugged drug out of their homes or drug to the, uh, basically to the abortion clinic. Uh, I know that you get fined, I believe, I believe you get fined if you don't, and possibly arrested. Uh, UK youth see religion as r irrelevant. And I'm running out of time, feds asked to probe Google, Google's leaky search terms. The FCC is considering a complaint that Google conceals the fact that user search terms are handed over to websites they visit. New York Times, Google cars drive themselves in traffic. French cops claim to hold secret illegal gypsy database. Zuckerberg admits working for man claiming Facebook ownership. U.S. security advisor says nations must work better together to fight international crimes. Talking about Russia and the U.S. And 66 days later, 33 Chilean miners are about to be freed. Very Masonic numbers there. And uh, I think that the whole thing was a research project for NASA. Hungary's uh, toxic sludge crisis worsens. Vinegar saves the Danube from toxic sludge. Smoking should be banned in homes and cars to protect children, says Health Chief. World Bank advises Russia to boost taxes on alcohol and Russians told to drink and smoke more. Japan hikes cigarette tax. U.S. pockets $20 billion in cigarette tax.